Welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the McLaren Metabolic Surgical Program. I'm Michael Kia, and the director of the McLaren Metabolic and Bariatric Institute. First, let's answer the question, what is metabolic disease? There are three types of disease processes that have been known to be associated with obesity. Type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. The combination of the three has been termed the metabolic syndrome. Today, we're going to talk about the McLaren Metabolic Surgical Program and its role with fighting the most severe aspect of this disease process, obesity-related type 2 diabetes. There are varying degrees of obesity. In the United States, morbid obesity is defined as a BMI of greater than 35, typically about 75 to 100 pounds overweight. This is a map of the United States that's color-coded based on the obesity rates in the state. And here you can see Michigan in the year 2000, where between 15 and 20 percent of the state was morbidly obese. And here you can see how the United States is changing over the last 10 years. Where in 2010, Michigan is between 25 and 30 percent of the state is morbidly obese. Likewise, as the disease of morbid obesity became a pandemic in the United States, the rates of diabetes and obesity-related diabetes also skyrocketed. Today in the United States, there are 26 million diabetics, but more importantly, there are nearly 79 million pre-diabetic patients. The incidence of diabetes has tripled from 1990 till 2005, and in four states, about 25% of the adult population has diabetes. Most importantly, we know that diabetics on average will lose between an average of six to 10 years due to the consequences of obesity-related type two diabetes. To begin with, diabetes is typically diagnosed through many different symptoms that you may have experienced. Perhaps you had excess urination, thirst, headaches. Sometimes it's diagnosed through blood work elevations in the blood sugar, or hemoglobin A1c. It's important to know that diabetes is a very complex disease. Globally, diabetes can be broken down into two main types. Type 1, also known as juvenile onset, or pancreatic insufficiency, is due to a lack of secretion of insulin from the pancreas. Typically, type 1 diabetics are diagnosed earlier in life and typically can be more severe diabetics. Type 2 diabetes, otherwise known as insulin-resistant diabetes, is predominantly seen in patients that have developed morbid obesity. Over 90% of type 2 diabetics are morbidly obese. The cause of type 2 diabetes in morbidly obese patients is due to a lack of hormonal regulation and control due to the morbid obesity, as opposed to type 1 diabetes that is due to a decrease in actual insulin secretion from the pancreas. However, due to the fact that diabetes is a complex disease, there can be degrees of overlap between the two different types of diabetes, and patients may not be easily classified into one or the other. Once diagnosed with obesity-related type 2 diabetes, the primary management is dietary. Focus on weight loss, decrease in carbohydrate and sugar consumption, and accurate monitoring of blood sugar is critical to maintaining a proper, healthy lifestyle. Your physician may prescribe medications, or you may be required to take insulin or insulin-like medications. It's important to know that these types of interventions are the primary modality of treating obesity-related type 2 diabetes. Much like any other disease, diabetes can progress. In fact, diabetes can be a lifelong debilitating disease. Proper follow-up with your primary care physician is very important. Compliance with your medication and dietary instructions is critical to maintaining good health. So what role does metabolic surgery play with obesity-related type 2 diabetes. As we talked about earlier, diabetes is a complex disease 
that depends on an interaction not just based on insulin secretion from the pancreas, but also how the liver and small intestine process food, what type of hormones they secrete that regulate the levels of blood sugar in your body. Surgical intervention for obesity-related type 2 diabetes is an evolving science in the world of medicine, and we're learning more and more about its greater role in the treatment of obesity-related type 2 diabetes. Metabolic surgery for obesity-related type 2 diabetes works by altering the secretion of intestinal hormones that regulate blood sugar control and insulin secretion. There are two main types of surgical intervention for obesity-related type 2 diabetes. The first, the laparoscopic Roux-en-Y bypass. The laparoscopic Roux-en-Y bypass is, has the strongest biological effect on hormone regulation for type 2 diabetes. It's the longest studied and, as far as we know, has the most durable effects on diabetes. Traditionally, the laparoscopic Roux-en-Y bypass has been used in the field of bariatric surgery. What we learned through there and through modifications has allowed it to be used primarily for the treatment of obesity-related type 2 diabetes by modifying the procedure to be more specific to patients that have obesity-related type 2 diabetes. The second option, the laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy, also works through a biological effect on the hormone regulation that controls an individual's blood sugar. It works best in patients that have a lower BMI as well as a patient who has a less severe form of diabetes. Now, all surgeries for obesity-related type 2 diabetes have risks and benefits, and a detailed discussion with your surgeon is necessary prior to proceeding with any type of intervention. Next, we're going to show a little video schematic of the different procedures. We'll begin first with the laparoscopic Roux-en-Y bypass. It's done laparoscopically, and it's done under general anesthesia. We access the abdomen through many small incisions. We isolate out a section of the stomach away, creating a small pouch. By isolating out that stomach away from seeing food, it starts to alter the secretion of the hormones that control your blood sugar. As food passes down through your new smaller stomach into the small intestine, the small intestine begins to secrete hormones at a level that your body hasn't seen in a long time. Hence, the resolution of the diabetes occurs very rapidly. Typically, if patients have surgery, within 24 to 48 hours, they're already starting to see near complete resolution or significant remission of their obesity-related type 2 diabetes. The second primary surgical option for the treatment of obesity-related type 2 diabetes is the laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy. In this video, you can see again that the procedure is done laparoscopically. It's also done under general anesthesia. This time, we go in with some very small instruments and we identify the stomach. We free up the stomach from its attachments. Typically, when food passes down into your stomach, it fills up your entire stomach, causing a massive secretion of specific enzymes that regulate your blood sugar. In this surgical procedure, we reduce down the volume of your stomach by removing about two-thirds of it. That has a biological effect on you that alters the secretion of hormones, such that when you eat food as it passes into your smaller stomach and down into your intestine, this changes how your body processes the food, how rapidly it processes it, and subsequently how it affects your blood sugars. Patients that undergo the laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy also see rapid improvements in their diabetes. However, it doesn't occur as quickly as with the laparoscopic Roux-en-Y bypass. Whenever we talk about surgical interventions or any type of intervention for a disease process, it's very important for us to talk about outcomes. Multiple national studies, as well as national associations, agree and acknowledge the significant benefits of surgical intervention 
for obesity-related type 2 diabetes. It's important to know that metabolic surgery is not a guaranteed cure for your obesity-related type 2 diabetes. Metabolic surgery has been shown to offer remission in a large percentage of patients. It typically occurs in about 85 to 95 percent of patients. However, that depends on the type of procedure as well as the severity of the type 2 diabetes. Now, who is a candidate for surgery? In the United States, most insurance carriers require patients to have at least a BMI of 35 or greater to be covered under insurance policies. The reason behind this is that studies have shown that metabolic surgery for patients with lower BMIs do not have as high of a success rate as for patients with higher BMIs. It's important to know that not every patient with diabetes requires surgery. Surgery is an option for obesity-related type 2 diabetes. Typically, we may see patients that have worsening diabetes, patients that are requiring increasing amounts of medications, or continuously increasing levels of insulin or insulin-like medications, or patients who have been diagnosed as obesity-related type 2 diabetes and simply do not want to be taking their medications or to have to deal with this lifelong debilitating disease. As we talked about, surgery for obesity-related diabetes is an evolving field in the world of medicine. Currently, it seems that the diabetes can typically go in remission for about 60% of patients. However, studies have shown that about 40% of patients may have some degree of reoccurrence of their diabetes at six to eight years. The identifying factors that can result in reoccurrence of diabetes after metabolic surgery include patients that are older in age, patients that have more severe diabetes, who are on very high levels of insulin, or who've been diabetic for a long time period, patients that have an underlying pancreatic insufficiency that limits how much endogenous or how much of your own insulin you can secrete. Finally, non-compliance with instructions after surgery can result in reoccurrence of obesity-related type 2 diabetes. Now, studies have also shown, though, that reoccurrence of the diabetes does not necessarily mean that the disease will come back to the same severity as it was prior to surgery. So although 30 to 40 percent of patients may experience reoccurrence of the diabetes, studies have shown that they're still a much better diabetic than they were prior to metabolic surgery. So what next? It's very important to continue to follow with your primary care physician for your diabetes management. If you haven't attended a diabetes education class, we highly recommend it either through your primary care physician or through an independent provider. If you'd like to discuss the option of metabolic surgery for your obesity-related type 2 diabetes, you can discuss this with your primary care physician or by contacting us directly at the McLaren Bariatric and Metabolic Institute.